Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at all the polishes that I wore in June and July. I kind of took a break towards the middle of June and then I came back at the middle in the middle of July, so it basically counts as one month. And once again, just like in the last video, all the glitter toppers and all the nail art will be in a separate video. So this first polish is by Manhattan and it's called I Like. And it's a very vibrant, like, almost like a cobalt blue, I guess. I'm not really good with color descriptions, but this is really pretty. It only took me two coats to get it opaque. I thought the formula was good. I didn't have any staining. I don't usually stain with blues, but I have one Essie polish that really stained the crap out of my nails. So this one didn't do that, so that's great. This next one is by Yves Rocher, and this is called Garance, I think. Uh, this is a really vibrant red color. It's it's a very light red, and it's very vibrant, and this definitely has a little bit of a jelly consistency. Um, it took me three coats to get it opaque, but I didn't think that it looked like sort of not completely opaque, like it wasn't on the edge to needing four. Um, it's just that I don't think you could get away doing less than that. Next we have one that I did not really care for. Um, this is by Twinkle T and it's called Subtweet. Now I will just say right now that this is supposed to be a stamping polish, so you're not technically supposed to wear this on its own, but I did. Um, basically I've been looking for the perfect yellow since my original perfect yellow um, dried out. I think I'm just going to end up repurchasing that one if I can find it anywhere. It was China Glaze's Happy Go Lucky. Either way, uh, this, I, I just, this was problematic for me. It didn't level because it was so thick. It was a pain to clean up. Like, the yellow would just get everywhere. Even if you went over it like four or five times, it would just, it would still stay there. <laughs> and it was very problematic. Now, I will say that if you're just doing like a light stamping, you're not going to have these issues. But yeah, like I've, I have some stamping polishes that you can just wear on, on their own with no problem at all. But this one is not one of them. So, you know, keep that in mind. I did do three coats here. It's not perfect. It didn't level. Um, I did wear this over a peel off base coat because I know how much of a pain this was going to be. Um, but I did have to do cleanup. And you can actually see from the edges of my nails that I'm... Like, I have some staining. It's not really clean, per se. So yeah, I did not like this. Next, we have another one that I was kind of eh about. Um, this is by Miss Lynn, and it's called Bloggers Must Have. Um, I wore this two different ways. On my pinky and ring finger, I'm wearing it over China Glaze's Violet Vibes, which is roughly the same color that this is in the bottle. And then I wore it on three coats on its own on the other two fingers. Now, I, how do I how do I put this? I don't think this is supposed to be worn by itself. I think that maybe Miss Lynn intended it to be, but I don't think you can get away with it. Now, what you're seeing here looks pretty much opaque, but it's not really. Um... Like I said, I did three coats on the two fingers, but they're not perfect and they're not good. Either way, I do kind of like the look of this polish and that's why this is problematic because I have such a love-hate relationship with this. I love how it looks in like low lighting when, you know, indirect lighting where you can't see any nail line and it's just this really pretty shimmery thing. It has a green shimmer, which I didn't mention in the beginning. It's just, it looks really cool. But then once you get into like sunlight or direct light or any kind of bright light, you're just like, this doesn't look good. So I do recommend it as a topper. You can use it over Violet Vibes. You can, you know, try it out over different colors. I'm just not sure it looks good on its own. This next polish is by China Glaze. This is Feel the Breeze. This is kind of a neon, neon pastel, like peachy color. I, I don't think I had any problem with this. Like, this was not as difficult to work with as 
China glazed pastels usually are. And I think that's because it doesn't have that much white in, in the polish. Usually I find that with really light polishes I have those, those issues. This one, I didn't really. Uh, I did three coats on its own, not surprising with this kind of color, and I don't think I had any issues otherwise, so that's good. Then next I wore one by OPI called I'm So Swamped. I wore this last year as well. I, I feel like I used to have trouble capturing greens because they didn't look good with my skin tone. I think that's what it was. I just, I found that whenever I took a picture of a green polish, it would make my, my hands look really weird. Um, I didn't really have that particular issue this time. I did change up my setup and my camera and stuff like that. So that's good. But regarding the polish, this was pretty good. I did two to three coats. I think I've said this a couple of times now, but my ring finger is really ridgy. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to get stuff to be opaque. Um... But I like the formula, I like the color, like it's it's kind of like a crayon green color, if that makes sense. So I really like this. Next I wore a really, really pretty one. This is by Painted Polish and it's called Belle of the Ballroom. Now, I don't have that many non crelly polishes by Painted Polish, but she does them really well. Like she does her crellies really well and she does these really well. I'm just, I'm so impressed. Um, this is like a really yellowy gold scattered holographic, but it looks kind of linear too in some places. I'm starting to think that maybe there's both in here. Um, there is a little bit of texture going on because some of the glitters are a little bit bigger. But overall, I just, I really like this. I think it's really pretty. It only took me two coats to get it opaque. I just, I really, really like this one. Next we have Violet Vibes, which is what I wore Bloggers Must Have Over. This is by China Glaze, I think I mentioned that. This is just a really pretty, like, purple, but like a warm purple. Um, it took me three coats. I found that a lot of polishes from this collection were a little bit on the crelly side. I didn't really mind that that much, so, you know, I, I don't, you know didn't have any issues with this. I like this polish. It's just pretty much a straight up cream slash crelly, so I like this. Next I have an orally polish. Uh, I don't tend to review many orally polishes because I don't really have that many, um, but this one is called Frisky. It's kind of like a light blue, but it has a little bit of green in there too. I just, I always find it hard to like call something like this turquoise because it's mostly blue, um, but either way, this was pretty good, had a good formula, it only took me two coats to get this opaque, and I like this color, like this particular tone of blue slash turquoise, so I really like this one. Next up, we have a Pretty Serious Polish, which is another one of those brands that I don't have my, many polishes by. This is called Princess Plutonium. This is a really bright pink. It's like a hot pink. It's not a neon per se. I would consider it a hot pink. And it has all of these black shredded glitters in here. I like this so much. Um, it's honestly, it's a really, really good polish. It's girly, but it's still edgy too, which I really like. It only took me two coats. Um, those glitters in there kind of help to not only distract, but also cover up the nail line. So, I like this one. Next we have an interesting polish. This is by Essence and it's called Milky Way. Oh boy. Um, I found this kind of hard to work with because it's so thick. Like all the, um, like the glitter pieces is, yeah, interesting. Um, it just, I feel like it makes it really thick and really hard to work with. You definitely want to use a base coat, a, a peel-off base coat, that is. And so this is what I do when I wear peel-off base coats. I actually use a gel top coat instead of regular top coat because a gel top coat is really thick for the most part and it tends to cover up like texture really well. And since I'm using a peel-off base coat anyway, I don't have to bother 
with removal and stuff like that. So that's what I do. I can highly recommend doing that, especially with a polish like this. I did three coats and yeah, I'm not sure I can recommend this polish. Next we have another bright pink one. This is by Essence and it's called Hashtag Lucky. I don't usually like pink. I've said this a hundred times, but this one is actually kind of cool. Um, I did three coats. I like the color, but I still don't think I'm going to wear it a lot. Next we have a glow-in-the-dark polish. I think this is my second to last one that I have that I've not yet swatched. Or, I mean, this one I have now. This is by Serum Number no. 5 and it's called Kiwi Glow Now. Um, this is a like light green sparkly polish. I'm kind of torn on whether or not the sparkle in here is actual holographic. I think it might be. Um, either way, I like this polish. Mine is so old, so it's gotten a little bit thick. You can definitely tell that there's some texture on my index finger and my ring finger, my ring finger is a little bit messed up too. That's not because of the polish, it's just because my bottle is really old. Um, I did three coats here. I, I thought it was fine. Like I said, it's a little bit thick, but I still liked it. And I like the glow as well. Next we have one by P Cupcake Polish. This was probably, probably the most popular indie for a time. Uh, this is very good looking and it's, well, the new version is a purple linear holographic. Now, I had the old version, but the old version had a pigment that tended to, like, disappear and blend into the, into nothing, basically. Um, so the original was a little bit more on the pink side, but I like this new version as well. Um, yeah, I did two coats for this. I actually think that the old one was a one-coater, but I can't remember if it was or not, so I don't know. Uh, either way, this next one is by Mazura, and it's called Sangria. This is a thermal polish that goes from a neon pink, or I don't know, maybe it's a hot pink, to almost like a wine color. It has a little bit of brown in there, but it's still pink. I'm not sure what to call it. Uh, I only did two coats for this one. It, I probably should mention that this is a gel polish. I, I like the transition. I like the color. I think this is a cool polish, but again, it's pink. I'm probably not going to wear it that much. But yeah, I, I liked it. This next one is by She. It's called, well, it only has a number, 610. This is just a basic orange cream. It took me three coats. Formula was okay. No real complaints. This is just like a basic orange color. Um, I do have to say that the She polishes, the small ones, don't have much product in them. I think it's five and a half mils. I'm looking around, but I don't have one at my desk right now. But yeah, it's a small, small bottle, but the colors are pretty good. Um, next we have another one by She, also one of the tiny bottles. This is 690. This is just a really bright blue. This only took me two coats, as opposed to the orange, which took me three. I like this too. Again, it's a really basic polish, um, basic color. You know, it, I feel like it's a good staple to have. Next we have another interesting one. This is by Life, has the number 107. This is a neon yellow polish with black glitter in it. And I love how this looks. Again with this one, the bottles are tiny. Uh, I think this is my second or third time that I've worn this polish. My bottle is almost empty. So um, yeah, I also don't think I can find these anymore. So that's kind of a shame. But I do like this. I like the formula. It was slightly thicker, but at the same time, I didn't have to wear it over white, even though it's a neon yellow. So I can't really complain about that. Next, we have a neon that I did not like at all. Uh, this is by Miss Lynn, and it's called Illuminating Power. Now, this is like a tennis ball yellow, except it's a little bit more on the green side. Uh, this actually dries matte, and I find that that, you know, caused some problems. I didn't think it dried down that quickly. It actually took quite a while. 
I, yeah, it had a weird formula. It was kind of sticky sometimes. You could still kind of move the polish around even though the polish was completely matte. I don't know. Um, I think the color is pretty. I don't have any color like this in my collection right now. Apart from this one, I just don't think it's the best polish. I did three coats. That was another thing. Because it took so long to dry, those three coats took forever. It's still a good polish. It's just, it can be a little bit tricky to work with. Next, I have another gel polish. This is by Pink Jellic, and this is called Dynamic Pink. Now, this is like a hot pink to fuchsia kind of color, but what I didn't realize until I took pictures was that this has a slight shimmer. Now, I'm not going to call I'm not going to call this a shimmer polish because it's so subtle. It's barely even there, but it is there. So, if you really really don't like shimmer, maybe you won't like this. But I didn't I didn't find that this was really that apparent. So if you don't know it, you probably won't be able to tell. I did three coats for this. I don't really know how gel polishes perform, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know what makes a good gel polish and what makes a bad gel polish. I found that this was pretty good. It didn't run. It didn't, like, bleed, I guess, as it dried. I have one polish that does that. Like, if you put on too much, it's gonna, like, it's gonna stay in place while you're applying it, and even after, but once you cure it, it kind of runs into your cuticles, which is really weird. Um, but that's the only one that does that. Like, this one doesn't do that, the other gel polishes I have don't do that, so I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. Either way, I'm gonna move on, because we're, we're running kind of long. This next one is by Essence, and it's called Ultraviolet. This is a purple polish with some shimmer. This was pretty good. Took me two to three coats. Again, my ring finger uh, being problematic. Um, yeah, I thought this was a good polish. No complaints. Uh, the shimmer is kind of interesting. It's kind of a macro shimmer. That's what I call shimmers where you can tell the different particles apart. But I still like it. Um, then, uh, is this the last one? No, it's not the last one. Um, this next one is by Trend It Up. And it's 005. This is a matte polish. It's like a turquoise kind of polish, but this one has a little bit more green to it. This took me two coats, and even though it's a matte polish, it's not 100% matte. I would almost call it like a semi-matte polish. Um, I took pictures with both matte and glossy toppers. You know, I can't really complain. I do think that this stained me a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. And then this is the last one. This is by Colors by LaRoe, and it's called Young Turks. This is a light blue linear holographic. Again, I apologize for my holographic not showing up that well. I promise it's just my lights. It's not really the polish. Um, I like this one. This only took me two coats. I like the color. I like the hollow. I like the formula. I like pretty much everything about it. I can definitely recommend this one if you can still get it. So yeah, that is it for my June and July polishes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, uh, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already, leave a comment, tell me which one you like, which one you didn't like, um, tell me which kind of polishes you wore in June and July. I don't know. Tell me anything. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video.